Right, good afternoon. For those that were in pod 10 earlier on, this isn't a repeat of what you heard, so it's a, a, a different presentation. Um, so I'm Phil Southall, I'm the Managing Director for uh, the Optus Bus Company. So you might think, well, that's a bit odd. Aren't you in competition with, uh, with Chilton uh, Railways here? Strictly speaking, yes, in certain markets we are. Um, but to be honest, this, this is how I view it. There, there is a lot more <laughs> to be had by working together. You know, and this slide here it, it is a classic. You know, pe people can't really see what's going on around them, which is, you know, you've got first class uh, transport system going around, you've got a train station, you've got really good bus connections into it, but, you know, there's no way you could live here without a very reliable car. You know, luckily Oxford is more enlightened than that, but, but that is a common situation uh, across the country. You know, and, and here's working together at its best. You know, that's perhaps uh, visionary for the future. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with what does uh, Oxford Bus Company do to um, to connect Oxfordshire? Um, so yes, we, we do run to London as well. Uh, have been doing so since 1977, when if you were brave enough in those days, you actually went via Henley to London uh, from Oxford. This coach is every uh, 10 to 15 minutes, gets there in uh, just over an hour and a half, uh, a million people a year. Uh, actually do it with us. Uh, we have lots of stops in Oxford, especially going out past Brooks University, Headington, Thornhill Park and Ride, which is an important um, interchange point as well. And we've got all the creature comforts uh, on our coaches as well, free 4G Wi-Fi. Um, extra leg room, I think we've got the largest amount of leg room between seats of any express coach service in the country, no less. Um, and also we run non-stop from, uh, from Thornhill to Headington, and we've got um, and tickets now and, and apps where people can actually use their, their phone to, to buy their tickets before they get on. So X90 is, is also growing at the same time that the Chilton Rails is growing. So that just goes to show that there is enough of a market in Oxford. I very much view it as getting people out of their cars is a good thing, whether it be onto the coach, onto the train or, or whatever. We've also got the airline, um, very important to Oxford. One thing that really, really irritates me is when people say that Oxford hasn't got good connections to uh, Heathrow Airport because at the height uh, of, of the season, you get a coach every 20 minutes and you're there in just over an hour. Um, so it's been in operation since 1984, and the gentleman was sitting there said he's been using it since 1985, so that, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, coach every 20 to 30 minutes, and as I say, worst case scenario, you're there in, in an hour and a half, so um, very well connected. Nearly half a million people do it a year, and again, we have eight local stops in, in Oxford, and it also stops at Lucna, uh, which wasn't welcomed by the locals when we put it in there, but uh, nonetheless it, it does now. We go to two stops at Heathrow, Terminal 5 and uh, Central Bus Station, and again, free 4G Wi-Fi, lots of leg room, and you can also use uh, your app to get tickets there. Gatwick, uh, again, since that airport's grown, uh, since 2002, uh, we've run it as a standalone service. Uh, at first, it used to go via Heathrow, which used to take quite a lot of, lot of people, but as demand has grown uh, at Gatwick, as the lower, um, more budget, or budget airlines have grown, it, it now uh, sustains its own service. So it runs every hour to, to Gatwick, uh, and you get there in two to two and a half hours. Um, about 200,000 people do that a year uh, from Oxford. Uh, and again, you've got all the, the local stops. Uh, we do North and South Terminal, and all the creature comforts uh, on there as well. Park and Ride is obviously one uh, big bit of our operations. Lots of people come to Oxford and uh, get directed to one of the five sites. Um, around 3 million people a year use Park and Ride in Oxford. So, as I said in, in our pod earlier on, imagine if all of those people drove into the centre of Oxford, what actually it would mean for the economy. Um, it's been going since 1973, and um, it's fully commercial as well, which is unique in the UK. Um, if you go to other areas, the local authority picks up the tab, and the bus company just happens to run the service. But here, the local authority provides the infrastructure, all those spaces, and we run these services on, on, on a fully commercial basis. Um, and yes, we've got empty tickets on there as well. And these are our super snazzy electric hybrid buses. We've got uh, a fleet of uh, 17 of those that operate those services. So I'd just like to cover now our partnership with Chilton, um, because this all started off really with uh, the rail replacement operation when the old Bicester Town uh, station, which was um, not as good as the one we've got today, should we say, at Bicester Village, uh, closed down. So we started in, in February uh, 2014. Um, 
and it continued in dedicated form until Oxford Park actually opened on the 25th of October uh, last year. Um, continues to run a service 500 today, as, as Graham said uh, in his presentation, it will do up until the line opens through to Oxford uh, in December 2016. And we had to expand the operation to make sure that every arrival and departure at Oxford Parkway has a bus connection into it. Uh, which I don't think has happened on any train service before <laughs> in, in Oxford. Yeah. But what we tried to do was, again, be quite innovative. And the vehicles that are used on this service have cycle racks. So, so the eight seats behind the stairs on the lower deck have been taken out to allow up to eight bikes to be carried. Chiltern was very clear that on its rail, or, or through the gauntlet down to, to operate, as she would say, to say, well, how can we guarantee that anyone that arrives at Oxford Parkway on a train and at Vista, uh, when um, we were doing the dedicated operation before, can use their bike? And, you know, you see in the continent and uh, in America where people put their bikes on the front of the bus or it's on a trailer behind, and we go, oh, that's not really going to fit in very well in Oxford. <laughs> so we actually came up with an innovative uh, solution where you can, uh, up to eight bikes can be carried on the bus, so you can actually roll it on and, and, and put it in. And then another thing that people were feeding back to us is that they want to keep an eye on their bike as well. They don't often trust it to be at the front of the bus or on a trailer behind or, or whatever. And also we gave free 4G uh, Wi-Fi on that as well, um, and so far we've carried over 100,000 passengers um, for Chiltern, so very much we see ourselves as a, as a partner of theirs to feed into uh, what they're trying to do to improve the train service. So here we are, here's one of the buses, um, dedicated livery, again, uh, you might think why is, a, why is a coach company advertising its competitor? Again, I think the sum of all the parts is, is, is big and <coughs> a better price to, to wait for. Graves covered in his presentation about Oxford Parkway quite a lot already, um, but we very much see it as creating a transport hub in the north of the city. We've got Thornhill um, already uh, in the west of the city, at least, but uh, in the east of the city, um, but Oxford, there's no reason why Oxford Parkway can't become that uh, transport hub as well. Um, not just going into the site, but also the buses that pass it on the main road, coming from places like Kiddington. Um, we put a new stop outside the station on the 28th of March because we were getting, unfortunately, the opening of Oxford Parkway coincided with the roadworks at Cutters Low roundabout. And all the cut roundabout, sod's law, you may say. But nonetheless, what that was meaning was buses were getting delayed, passengers were arriving at Oxford Parkway just to see the train go, which uh, isn't great for integrated transport. So we uh, introduced a new stop where the bus can now go right up to the front door, let people off, and uh, it's working very well from the 10th of March. And we're obviously looking at further possibilities for integration at Oxford Parkway to use that as um, a public transport hub. So what might we be looking at, I hear you say? I mean, none of this is by any means definite, they're just very much um, ideas at the moment. But um, there is a fund of money uh, through, um, or Discover England fund, that Visit England is putting out. 40 million fund over three years to encourage more tourists to leave London. Because about 75% of tourists that come to the UK go to London, they get scared about leaving London, especially if they hire a car, because we drive on the left, virtually everybody else drives on the right, so they get very concerned about leaving London. So they've thrown the gauntlet down to uh, the transport industry, basically, uh, and uh, tourist attractions to say, how can we develop world-class itineraries to attract people out of London? Integration is an essential part of that. We need public sector blessing from uh, destination management organisations, local enterprise partnerships and local authorities, etc. And a seamless, bookable experience for customers is what's required. So that almost fits with what we're trying to do. So uh, we very much want to explore which one, whether there's um, some potential to do that. Because one of the challenges we have is how do you go that extra mile? So when you land at Oxford Parkway, how do you get to Blenheim Palace? You know, when you land at High Wycombe, how do you get to Old Beaconsfield Village? If you land in Oxford, how do you get to the high street? You know, it's, it's joining up the, up the offering, so it's seen as the, for the tourists who might not know. You wouldn't believe the number of people that get to Oxford Station and go, is this it? And get back on the, stairs, on the train and leave again, because they don't realise that most of the attractions are well away from the station. Um, so, as I say, the train gets to the main stations, but how do you cover that extra mile uh, off the network? And uh, also shopping opportunities as well, Vista Village. Um, in the case of the point, although since Vista Village Station's opened, that's obviously reduced, but there are still issues for people coming down from, from the north and um, places south of Birmingham. 
Improving access to London and Heathrow, again, people say we're not very well connected to Heathrow, and I've told you now that you are, so you please spread the message. Um, but for rail customers, people who are coming down from places south of Birmingham, mainly, at the moment have to travel into London and back out again, which is perceived as a bit of a barrier to, to doing that journey by public transport. So people who are getting on in Banbury and Vista and places like that at the moment have to go all the way to Paddington, they then have to go across, or into Marlborough, I should say, and they go across to Paddington to get a train out to Heathrow Airport, which is, and you know, catching the underground, you have to get all, all your luggage down the escalators, it seems a bit of a chore. So one of the challenges is how can we cut that, that corner off and, and come up with a proposition, a good proposition for people in, in Oxfordshire, so we want to try and explore that uh, with children as well. Um, and that's all I've got to say, really. I'll hand over now to... Uh